Bristol Community College, Mathematics with Dan Avedikian, Math 131, Elements of College Mathematics, Section 2.2, Problem 34. This is Section 2.2, Problem 34. It says solve the matrix, and we have a matrix. The top row is 2, negative 3, negative 1, 0. The middle row is 3, 2, 2, 2. And the bottom row is 1, 5, 3, 2. Now, step one in solving a matrix like this is get a 1 in the upper leftmost position. Right now it's a 2. Now, there are two ways I can make that 1 show up. One of them is multiply the top row by 1 over this value, 1 over 2, which would make some fractions. Here I'd have a negative 3 over 2, a negative 1 over 2. The 0 over 2 would stay 0. That'd be okay, but I'd make some fractions. The other option would be to swap row 1 and row 3. If I bring row 3 up, I'd get a 1 in the upper left where I need it. Both options work. Both options will lead me to the same answer in the end. One of those two options makes fractions, the other doesn't. So of course I would prefer the option where I don't get fractions. So the option where I don't get fractions is where I swap row 1 and row 3. So I'll set up my next matrix. And off to the side I will say swap row 1 comma row 3. So the new row 1 is going to be the old row 3, basically. So 1, 5, 3, 2 becomes my new row 1. The middle row can stay the middle row. 3, 2, 2, 2. And then what was row 1 will become the new row 3. So 2, negative 3, negative 1, 0. So step 1 is complete. Step 1, I wanted a 1 in the upper left. I now have a 1 in the upper left. So step 2 is the two values under the 1 in that leftmost column must be turned into zeros now. So let's start with the 3. I'll set up my next matrix. The top row can stay as is. 1, 5, 3, 2. Now, I have a 3. I want to make it a 0. I have to make an equation that will make that happen. My equation will start with row 2 because that's the row I want to make the 0 in row 2. And the equation will be row 2 equals some stuff plus the old row 2. Whatever row my equation starts with, it has to end with the same row. So it starts with row 2, ends with row 2. And what I initially call stuff is the row with the 1 in the same column, which is row 1. And it gets multiplied times the number I'm zeroing, but opposite sign. So I'm zeroing a positive 3, so in my equation I have a negative 3. So my equation is the new row 2 equals negative 3 times row 1 plus the old row 2. So let's do that equation all the way across, make some new values. So in the first position, negative 3 times row 1, I'll have negative 3 times 1. I'll make a negative 3. Add to row 2, negative 3, positive 3, 0. Next, negative 3 times row 1 is negative 3 times 5, which is negative 15. Take that result, add to row 2. So negative 15 and positive 2. So negative 15, positive 2. Negative 15, positive 2 is negative 13. Next, negative 3 times row 1 is negative 3 times positive 3. So I make a negative 9 when I multiply. Take the answer and add to row 2. So negative 9, positive 2. Negative 9, positive 2 gives me a negative 7. And finally, in the last position, I'm going to do negative 3 times row 1 which is negative 3 times 2, I'm going to make a negative 6. And I'm going to add that result to row 2. So negative 6, positive 2. Negative 6, positive 2 is negative 4. So there's one of my zeros. Now I have to zero the other position, which is currently a positive 2. So it's a 2. I'm going to set up an equation to make that 2 turn into a 0. The equation will start with row 3, because that's the row where I'm making the 0. And the equation will go row 3 equals some stuff plus the old row 3. Again, if my equation begins in row 3, it must end in row 3. So it begins in row 3, ends in row 3, it begins in row 3 because that's the row we're making the 0. Now, I initially leave a space, I just say stuff. And I go back and fill it in. The stuff is the row with the 1 in the same column, which in this step is row 1. And that row is multiplied times the value I'm zeroing. So it's the 2, they're both 2, but opposite sign. In the matrix, I have a positive 2 that I want to zero up. So my equation must have a negative 2. So my equation is the new row 3 equals negative 2 times row 1 plus the old row 3. 
So let's do that. So negative 2 times row 1 is negative 2 times positive 1. I make a negative 2. Add to row 3. So negative 2, positive 2. Negative 2 plus positive 2 is 0. Next position, negative 2 times row 1. It's negative 2 times 5. It's positive 5. So negative 2 times positive 5 is negative 10. Add that result to row 3. So negative 10 and positive and negative 10 and negative 3. Another negative 13. Next position. Negative 2 times row 1 is negative 2 times positive 3. I make a negative 6. Take that result of negative 6, add to row 3. So negative 6 and negative 1 is negative 7. And finally, the last position, negative 2 times row 1 is negative 2 times positive 2. That's a minus 4 when I multiply. Take that result, add it to row 3. So negative 4 plus 0. Negative 4 plus 0 is negative 4. Now, notice this is pretty interesting. I get the same row twice. So each row of my matrix represents an equation. So what I have is really only two equations. I have this equation here, which is 1x plus 5y plus 3z equals 2. And then the next equation I have twice. 0x minus 13y minus 7z equals negative 4. So I have three variables, but only two equations. I can't find the answer. If I have three variables, I need three equations. So usually, so this is the case where you have infinitely many solutions. Usually when that happens, what happens is you have an all zero row. And when an all zero row shows up, it typically shows up in the bottom. Though it could show up in the middle. But this is another situation where you have infinitely many solutions. I have essentially lost an equation. I have three variables, really only two equations. So this case is where I have infinitely many solutions. Now, some teachers want you to write those infinitely many solutions in a particular form. Um, for my class, if you say infinitely many solutions, that's, that's enough. It tells me which case you have.